Hey guys, ready to meet, read more out of the crossover. We're going to be starting on page 42 today. And this first chapter is called The Bet Part One. We're down by seven at halftime. Trouble owns our faces, but coach isn't worried. Says we haven't found our rhythm yet. Then, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Vondi starts dancing. The shake, only he looks like a seal. Then, Coach blasts his favorite dance music, and before you know it, we're all doing the cha-cha slide. To the left, take it back now, y'all. One hop this time. Right foot, let's stomp. JB high-fives me with a familiar look. You want to bet, don't you, I ask. Yup, he says, then touches my hair. This next part is called Ode to My Hair, and I wanted to show you what the definition of ode is. Um, I figure that's probably not a word that you see very often. So ode, the definition says a lyric poem in the form of an address. Again, lyric poem makes sense, right? Because this book is written in poetry in verse. Um, of an address to a particular subject, often elevated in style or manner and written in varied or irregular meter, a poem that's meant to be sung. So it's like he's writing this really special poem, almost like a song um, to honor, in this case, his hair. So his hair is a big deal to him. Ode to my hair. If my hair were a tree, I'd climb it. I'd kneel down beneath it and enshrine it. I'd treat it like gold and then mine it. Each day before school, I unwind it. And right before games, I entwine it. I entwine it. These locks on my head, I designed it. And one last thing, if you don't mind it, that bet you just made, I declined it. So JB wants to make a bet something to do with his hair, but Josh declines it. His hair is too precious to him. Okay. Ooh, this one's called the bet part two. If I lose the bet, you want to what? If the score gets tied, he says, and if it comes down to the last shot, he says, and if I get the ball, he says, and if I don't miss, he says, I get to cut off your hair. Sure, I say, as serious as a heart attack. You can you can cut my locks off, but if I win the bet, you have to walk around with no pants on and no underwear tomorrow in school during lunch. Vondi and the rest of the fellas laugh like hyenas. Not to be outdone, JB revises the bet. Okay, he says. How about if you lose, I caught... I cut one lock, and if you win, I will moon that nerdy group of sixth graders that sit near our table at lunch. Even though I used to be one of those nerdy sixth graders. Um, even though I love my hair the way Dad loves Krispy Kreme, even though I don't want us to lose the game, odds are this is one of JB's legendary bets I'll win because that's a lot of ifs. And it is true, right? So this is what has to happen. It has to get tied. It has to come down to the last shot. JB has to be the one to get the ball at the very end of the game, and he has to make the shot. So it does seem like a lot of ifs. Okay, next chapter, the game is tied. Mm, that's the first part. When JB's soft jumper sails, sounds like it's coming down to the last shot, and JB has the ball. When JB's soft jumper sails, tick through the air, tock. The crowd stills, tick. Mouths drop, tock. And when his last second shot, tick, hits net, tock. The clock stops. The gym explodes. It's hard, bleachers empty, and my head aches. So again, we have to infer right, that he made the shot. The fact that everybody in the gym is exploding and the fact that Josh's reaction is like his head aches. It's obviously he's in shock because he's lost the bet. All right, this chapter is called the In the Locker Room. 
After the game, JB cackles like a crow. He walks up to me grinning, holds his hand out so I can see the red scissors from coach's desk smiling at me. Their steel blade sharp and ready. I love this, like winter loves snow, even though I spent the final quarter in foul trouble on the bench. JB was on fire and we won and I lost the bet. Mm, this one's called cut. Time to pay up, filthy, JB says, laughing and waving the scissors in the air like a flag. My teammates gather around to salute. Filthy, 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 they chant. He opens the scissors, grabs my hair to slash a strand. I don't hear my golden lock hit the floor. But I do hear the sound of calamity when Vondi hollers, oh, snap. <laughs> and again, this is something you're going to see throughout the book where Kwame Alexander pulls a word out and gives a definition of it. So the word calamity, an unexpected, undesirable event, often physically injurious. As in, if JB hadn't been acting so silly and playing around, he would have cut one lock instead of five from my head and avoided this calamity. As in, the huge ball patch on the side of my head is a dreadful calamity. As in, after the game, mom almost ha has a fit when she sees my hair. What a calamity, she says, shaking her head and telling dad to take me to the barber shop on Saturday to have the rest cut off. And that seems like the perfect spot to stop. Thank you for joining me.